Netflix Maga reporting. Bristol Club Lakota is being closed and turned into offices and flats. So no big surprise there, really. And we're getting a lot of that news coming from the UK. Not even a London thing it happens everywhere. Gentrification is a bitch, but let's read the topic. So it says here, Bristol's uh, famous club Lakota is set to close and it's developed into office space. And 54 restaurant flats, re- residential flats, are according to the Bristol Post. The connecting coroner's court and court and stocks stokes croft beer garden will also close to make way for the development the club's closure has looked to be on the car since 2018 so they've had a good run i guess in it 2018 waiting for it to be closed and always you know the, the benefit of those kind of delays is that you can all every weekend is the last party ever i know for a few clubs i used to go to that was some that was kind of one of the appeals right you always wanted to you were kind of hoping you went to the last event and obviously the bar oh no the promoter was also using the fact that it was maybe the last event as a promotion tactic so it kind of served both purposes um when it's all owners it continues here the burgess family released a statement expressing a wish to explore new opportunities for our site that has great potential to support the community above and beyond the nightclub it confirmed they were looking at proposals to convert it into a mixed house mixed use site which will also include residential accommodation as well as uh, some, some business space today the development was confirmed by bristol city's council development committee on the zoom call six counties voting in favor of the plan plans state that nine of the nine the proposed resident flats will be affordable amounts to 20 percent a campaign against development saw more than 80 thousand people sign a petition which campaign is arguing the clubs plays a role in bristol's nightlife and economy the petition was not brought up by the case of Center's meeting labor councillor harriet bradley who voted against the plan said it's alarming that 8,000 people have tried to sign a petition but it hasn't been heard democratically it doesn't seem that we should listen to these proposals before there's been a chance we didn't hear that there was a massive petition which rather offsets the purpose of your comments i have very mixed feelings about the proposal i feel it's wrong democratically to go ahead when there hasn't been a chance for the big petition to be discussed at full council the culture scene in bristol is why so many people flock there and lakota is an intentional renowned nightclub the loss of it will be tragic now i'm not really familiar with this lakota place to be completely honest but just speaking about it generally it's obviously a shame when this thing happens um i guess the thing with me with gentrification which i don't really understand and i think i'm a fair person i would say i understand why gentrification is around i understand the idea behind it right um especially in the uk there isn't or in most in most kind of metropolitan cities in the uk there isn't much room there isn't much space to build you can only build so high um so some spaces that exist um if they can be turned into you know multi multi multi-use sites wherever they may be you know i'm all for it maybe you're gonna have to get rid of half the warehouse and then turn that into maybe a co-working space in order to bring some more money into the area whatever it may be i'm i'm game i don't mind it the issue i have with gentrification is that usually with gentrification they tend to always build on places that were never considered for building residential homes but they only start building there when the you know scrappy diy club opens up the bar the restaurant the bike shop it gets that area popping people start coming over there timeout features that area as a one place to go in the summer and then suddenly now it turns into a place that people want to live but the other thing that makes it hard to swallow is that it's not as if they like build these residential flats to house a local community that have made that place pop off it's usually always sold to the highest bidder more likely than not foreign investors trying to build out their portfolio or people who have just you know generally gonna use that space as like their third or fourth home um so i don't really see the point of it right because by and large if you feel if you kind of get rid of those cultural spaces that add something to the community and you just build these shiny metal glass enforced um building apartments that all look the same you just lose the the vibe you lose the kind of spirit that was in that area and it just turns into another sterile residential block i don't really get why that is kind of beneficial and if you don't have and most of the places especially the ones in my area most of these new built flats they're completely empty no one actually lives there right so a lot of the properties are still for sale they're still available to let still available to rent 
so the people that actually own the buildings are spending more money just keeping the lights on than they are actually receiving in any kind of mortgage or rent payment so it doesn't make any sense whereas if you keep those warehouse spaces around you maybe upgrade a few of them if you want to slap a fucking costas in the middle there fair enough you want to start prep there i get it it's annoying but i get it then you have a consistent income with those kind of shops that people know and love and then you also have the ability to kind of invest some money into those bars and clubs to allow them to maybe uh speak to a bigger customer base right that would be the way to go about things if a place if there's like a warehouse space and it's just you know there's water dripping from the ceilings why not give the bar the person that owns it um money to basically do the refurbishments needed to get it up to spec so that they can have more people feel comfortable when they're coming into their space and then in general it just because you know it creates like a, a money loop for you because you know more people are comfortable in the space the more people pay for tickets more people pay tickets pay for drinks ultimately lines the landlord's pocket so I don't really understand some of the things like this. It doesn't make any sense. Why would you... There's obviously people that like the club, like that space. 8,000 people sign a petition. You don't hear it. You don't hear them out. You just go side with the big, um, you know, housing committee people or whatever they're called, housing development guys, and then you just completely fuck off the local community. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever, especially nowadays, or especially post-COVID, right? There's going to be a lot of issues with people... Uh, unable to pay rent unable to you know occupy spaces you probably should be easing some um restrictions you should be allowing people some room to maneuver so that you can pick up the slack of all these months that you've been out of money and then if you then want to go kick them out in favor of a new housing development fair enough but this type of thing i just don't see how that makes any sense whatsoever it's just really really bizarre um like i said and again if you're the person like and i and i think for myself too why would i want to buy a flat in a gentrified area that's that's um effectively my flat is effectively on the spot where i want to party like doesn't make any sense right you want to move if you move to hackney wick and because it's a popping area but your flat happens to be built up on the site where mixed garages what's the point of living there you went you went to live there because mix is there the moment that my housing development knocks mix down that area becomes null and void so I just don't get that kind of thinking on gentrification. But again, maybe it's something that's worth about my tax bracket and I shouldn't understand it. But I just think so that's where they kind of miss a trick because I do think most people would be up for a sensible discussion about, you know, ensuring that more voices are heard in this debate. It's not just, you know, the people that live there, the hipsters or people that are kind of counterculture. It is a, a conversation that is spread out amongst the local council. And maybe it's a, maybe it's a, maybe it's a local, maybe it's your fellow residents as well maybe it might just be a thing of like if you live in a warehouse area and you've you've been living there like it's a council home and these kids come up and open up a techno club and it's banging techno for like you know eight hours of the day every weekend or 10 hours 12 hours whatever it is i get why you would maybe vote in favor of the residential group coming in and building a luxury building block of apartments that are completely soundproof and you know have an amazing car garage and bike rack and shit i get why that would make more sense than going for the warehouse space but i don't know man i wish there was a bit more balance in these arguments but it never is it's always just like one or the other it's always like unrealistic hipsters and scenesters thinking that they could just carry on doing what they're doing forever you know but you have to just recognize the climate that we're in the place that we live in it's not going to happen we're not berlin it's never going to do that or it's kind of um Res newer residents coming in and having no understanding of the spaces they're moving into and just you know writing a check so that they can live somewhere cool and then suddenly when they get there it's not cool anymore bizarre